Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. In this week's Pass the PE Exam video, I am talking to a professional engineer, Jaque C. Jones, PE, who is also the author of Pass the PE Exam in Three Months, Strategies and Mindset for the Non-Test Taker. Jaque will discuss the strategies and mindset that you need to be able to achieve that same success and pass the PE exam yourself. Let's jump right in. Jaquay, welcome to Pass the PE Exam. I'm really excited to have you with us here today. To start off, please tell our listeners about what it is that you do today on a daily basis. Uh, well, yep. Yeah, uh, thanks, Anthony. Uh, thanks for having me uh, once again. Uh, on a regular basis, my day to day, uh, I lead an engineering department for a government agency uh, responsible for uh, planning, designing, uh, and implementing conservation engineering practices that address oil erosion, uh, water quality, air quality, among other natural resource concerns, uh, primarily on privately owned agricultural land. Okay, wow, that sounds awesome. That sounds exciting. So what made you decide to write the book, Pass the PE Exam in Three Months, Strategies and Mindset for the Non-Test Taker? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> Uh, so I actually started writing the book back in 2019, uh, the spring of 2019. Uh, so, uh, you know, pre-COVID, uh, you know, uh, all of that good stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I passed the DE exam my first time in 2017, uh, fall of 2017. So it was still you know, relatively fresh in my mind. Uh, and when I was preparing for the test, uh, you know, I, I noticed, you, you know, you always see, you always hear from those who passed on their first go around, uh, you know, they, they like to post, you know, their uh, NTES, uh, you know, pass uh, you know, on their different social media sites. Uh, you know, they always talk about how they passed, you know, what they did. And, uh, you know, you weren't hearing much from those who weren't able to pass the first go around, you know, the three timers, you know. I'm a three-timer myself, uh, proud of it, uh, you know, uh, able to, uh, to achieve the goal in spite of all, uh, all odds. Uh, so, you know, I, I wanted to, to put out a resource, you know, that, uh, you know, focus on those, that, those folks that, uh, you know, don't consider themselves, uh, you know, test takers, you know, people who struggle with tests, uh, historically have, um, and, uh, you know, that was one of the main motivators. Um, you know, another reason, uh, you know, obviously I'm a young black man uh, working in the field of engineering. Um, you know, I wanted to, uh, you know, provide some representation. Uh, you know, I'm a strong believer. You can't be what you don't see. Uh, you know, so uh, I was hoping to, uh, you know, to motivate and encourage others, you know, other black uh, engineers, other minorities, uh, and also other people, like I said, that, uh, you know, haven't, uh, you know, historically been uh, strong test takers and uh, show them that, uh, you know, if I can do it, you know, all people, <laughs> you, know, you can do it too. That's great, man. No, I applaud you for that. I think that First of all, I think diversity in engineering is really important and where we're going today. It's something that here at the Engineering Management Institute, we're always focusing on and trying to encourage it and constantly trying to interview and highlight, you know, people in all diverse backgrounds, cultures and disciplines. I think it's really important. And also, you know, just commend you on the idea of, you know, not everyone's going to pass this exam on the first time for sure. And I, I can't imagine how many engineers didn't pass it on the first time were dejected and then didn't take it again and then never got their license. And so more people like you that did fall into that situation that were able to overcome that by sharing your strategies, I think that could be really beneficial. And so I'm excited that you know, I'm really happy that you, you took the initiative because of those things. Yeah, thanks. Mark. All right. So Jaque, there are eight specific, very important tips that you discuss in the book, and I'm excited that you're going to share them here with our viewers. Number one is to know your reasons for becoming a PE. So talk to us about why you think this is important. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, a, uh, that's a big one. Um, you know, think about it. I mean, what's your reason? You know, why, why are you embarking on this, this long, hard journey? You know, it's not easy to be, become a PE. There's a, 
there's a lot of uh, energy, uh, a lot of time, effort, uh, you know, preparation and uh, cooperation, you know, from from your support system uh, that you know is required in order to become a P. Um, you know, so if you if you don't have have a, a clear reason, uh, you know, a clear driving motivator on why, you know, this attaining this licensure is so important, you know, in spite of all of the other things that, you know, we have going on as functioning adults, you know, um, you know litany of things that we have going on, uh, you know, if you have a spouse or kids, you know, if you work, you know, full-time job or, you know, just any responsibilities that you have, what, what's gonna, gonna push you to uh, find time to dedicate yeah, no, I mean, it's, I agree hundred percent. I mean, I think that when we have a goal by understanding, you know, why we want to achieve that goal, what are the motivating reasons behind it? That's often what drives us to it because, you know, Jaquay is just being honest. I mean, this is not an easy process. I mean, it's a, it's a hard process. It takes years. If you start with the FE exam and getting your experience and then getting the PE, uh, applying for the PE and it's difficult. And, you know, if you check out some of the videos, on our YouTube channel. I mean, we have the steps laid out for you. We've got a lot of interviews with people like Chikwe who've gone through the process, but you still need to take in that information and take action. So it's definitely not easy, but I agree that, you know, having understanding your why can be an excellent motivator and kind of pushing you, pushing you towards it, which is really, really important. So number two, Jaque, is to select the appropriate test for you. How can test takers ensure that they select the right exam? Okay, so the key thing there is selecting the correct test for you. So not not what your friend took, or you know what your supervisor did, or you know what your 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 brother did. You know what what's the right test? For you? That's gonna depend on your background, of course. You know, um, you know your schooling. Uh, you should start there. Uh, you know what what you major in. You know what courses did you take? You know you also want to take into consideration your training. Uh, so if you've had any, any specific trainings in uh, certain subjects, or, uh, certain fields of engineering, um, you know, any experience that you've attained while working, obviously, uh, those are, are uh, good uh, things to look at when you're considering the test that you're taking. Um, you know, and speaking of experience, uh, when you're looking at the exam specifications, which is an absolute must when you're considering the test that you're uh, you know, you're thinking about the, the subjects that you have experience in, comparing them to the exam specifications. You're looking at the number of questions that are asked in the different fields and a different topic you're thinking of taking. Uh, and then you're also thinking of your, your knowledge of those areas. So thinking about those things, what's going to be the flattest learning curve possible, you know? So when you're looking at it, you don't want to take something just because you're interested in it or you may want to learn something uh, about that specific field. Don't do that. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, do things that uh, can complement what you already know uh, that you can uh, enforce by uh, using the knowledge that you learn and studying. Uh, doing those things when you're selecting your tests, uh, they will help to ensure uh, that you're setting yourself up for it. Yeah, that's great. And I, and I agree. And I think the key point here is that, you know, sometimes we get tempted to select one portion of the P exam because we heard it was easy or people said that this section is easier than this section. And who knows, maybe it's true, maybe it isn't. But before you go and just pick that one for that reason, you know, to Jaquay's point, you need to understand what you're good at, where your technical strengths, what was your background and education in, and, you know, think about that before you just jump to select a more popular section of the exam, because that may not just be the easiest route. The best route may be, you know, leveraging your strengths, of course, and, and what you know, and that, that's important. Because I do know a lot of engineers who just kind of get caught up in, hey, everyone said to take this one, so I'm kind of going to take this one, and it doesn't always end well. All right, number three, have a study plan. Why is having a study plan important for the PE exam? Yeah, well, again, you know, PE to give yourself the best chance at success, at success. Um, you know, need to prepare. Uh, so if you have a study plan, let me just say, you know, 
Yeah, the equation that I think of is no study plan equal failure. <laughs> you, know, the uh, you know, again, we, I, th I talked about, you know, all the responsibilities that we have as functional adults. Um, you know, without a study plan, you know, how are you going to carve out time to study? You know, how are you going to know how much time you have available to study or for how long you need to study? Um, so, you know, having a study plan is crucial, you know, in order to ensure that you allow your time adequate, yourself adequate time to prepare uh, for one. Uh, you know, it, it's, it helps you to lay out, provide some structure, and uh, you're holding yourself accountable. You know, you're setting these, these, uh, these points, uh, you know, these uh, earmarks for yourself to achieve. And uh, that's where it starts. Uh, you know, that's going to be you on test day. You're not going to have anyone to draw on. You're not going to be able to ask anyone questions. Uh, so you want to make sure that you paid your dues in full in advance. And in order to do that, you need to have a study plan. Yeah, that's excellent. And really, I mean, if you're not going to go on a long journey hike without a map, without a trail map, without something to guide you, it's the same thing with the PE exam. It's a big undertaking. You have a certain amount of time to prepare, and there's a lot of different topics to prepare on. So if you don't have a plan, to Jaquay's point, you know, how are you going to make sure you finish all that stuff by the time you get to the exam? I know for me, you know, I was putting study time on my calendar to make sure that I got to it every day. I took a review course or I bought a book that had chapters in it. And I said, like, I'm doing one chapter a week. Again, it was just part of a plan to make sure that I was hitting kind of all the different topics that I had to before test day. Because if there's no plan, you know, I like Jaquay's equation, no plan equals failure, because you're just not going to cover everything that you need to cover for the exam. And then you're just going to miss questions. And if you miss too many questions, we all know what happens. All right. Number four, form winning habits. What do you mean by winning habits, Jaquay? Yeah, this, this is actually uh, one of my, uh, one of my favorite uh, topics in the, uh, in the book. Uh, but habits, you know, uh, just in general, you know, human beings are creepy. Um, you know, everything we do, not everything, but for the most part, uh, most of what we do on our day to day is a result of habits. Uh, you know, you think about it, uh, you know, you, you wake up at the same time, uh, you, you go to work the same route, you know, more or less, given, you know, barring, uh, you know, some traffic jams, uh, you know, you, you uh, brush your teeth a certain way, uh, you, you exercise a certain time. Uh, I mean, you know, most of the things we do are a result of habits. And habits are extremely powerful, you know, widely accepted that it takes about 21 days to create habits and also to break habits. Uh, so, you know, realizing that, you know, we can't, we can't get away from that. You know, we're going to, we're beholden to our habits. Uh, but what we do have control over is, you know, which habits uh, we're going to feed. Uh, you know, so uh, I say bad habits, you know, that's all relative, you know, from one Spanish point. Uh, you know, i will say non-winning habits. So a winning habit is a habit that's going to ultimately help you to achieve a desired result, you know. Non-winning habits are not gonna help you to get there. So uh, you want to cut out as many of those non-winning habits when you're preparing for the exam and try to uh, highlight or adopt winning habits as many as possible uh, in order to help you to achieve that's on the exam. Yeah, I love that point because I think a lot of professionals you know, might agree that habits can be beneficial in their career, but they also may not realize that there can be bad habits that can be very detrimental to your career. So to Jaquay's point, you need to form winning habits that are going to kind of, you know, drive you forward. Um, you know, any of you out there looking for more information on habits, I know James Clear's book, Atomic Habits is like a, you know, all-time bestseller on the topic. It's a really good book around how to create successful habits and winning habits. And like I said, for me, it was getting up every morning, having it on my calendar and studying every day for the PE. And that was a habit that I cultivated, a habit that I created. You can create all kinds of study habits. Um, and quite frankly, creating some good study and focus habits can be beneficial beyond the exam too, because, you know, studying for an exam is just something that you're focusing on for a period of time. If you develop good habits that help you to focus on a project like that, you can use it on other projects, you know, in your career and life, et cetera. So I think the general idea of forming winning habits is just a great, 
you know, all around practice beyond the PE exam um, as well. All right. Number five, build your speed. Please explain this one, Jaque. Yep. So this is a standardized test. Uh, you know, we've got, uh, you know, uh, 480 questions to answer in, you know, eight hours. You know, we've got 240 in the afternoon, 200 in the morning. Uh, so, you know, it boils down to six minutes per question if you spent the same amount of time on each. Uh, six minutes isn't a whole lot of time, <laughs> you know, for some of these problems. Uh, so, you know, you, you need to work on, on your speed, uh, you know, and uh, obviously repetition uh, is one of the main ways to help to build speed. Uh, you need to be practicing, uh, you know, if they keep practice enough, you need to practice some more. And I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, uh, practice problems, uh, quizzes, uh, practice exams, you know, uh, problems, you know, work problems. Uh, that helps to build your speed. You know, I mentioned six minute problems, you know, uh, when you're taking when you're taking your uh, your study, uh, your practice exams, when you're working your problems, only allow yourself six minutes to solve a problem. Uh, obviously, you're not going to spend six minutes on every problem. You could spend longer on a given problem. You could spend, you know, be able to solve a problem within two minutes or less. But when you're practicing, make a concerted effort only to allow your time six minutes. Allow yourself six minutes to uh, to either select an answer or to market and move on. Um, if you do that, uh, you will definitely help yourself. You would uh, you will give yourself a better chance passing. Also, when it comes to building speed, uh, you wanna make sure that you have an in-depth in understanding of the subject matter. Um, there are a number of problems on the exam that allow you to answer them quickly if you have a good knowledge, good understanding of the material. Uh, you know, conceptual problems are a good example. Uh, you know, they could either kill you or they can save your life, you know, if you have a good understanding. Uh, so gaining that in-depth knowledge, in-depth understanding of the subject matter, you know, will help you to uh, run through those problems faster. Yeah, that's great. And I really like that idea of, the you know, being conscious about the six minutes. And when you do that, I would recommend, you know, really put yourself in the test-taking atmosphere, you know, have the calculator you're allowed to have, have the materials you're allowed to have, you know, try to replicate the test taking day. But really, I like the idea of being very conscious about the six minutes, which is great. All right, number six, learn from the experience of others. Is this something that you yourself had to do, Jaquay? Yeah, uh, you know, uh, like I said, I took the test three times. So um, uh, the first time I took it, you know, I, I kind of took it in, uh, you know, without telling folks. Uh, I may have talked to a couple of engineers I knew. Uh, you know, one was a mentor. Uh, the other was my brother-in-law, actually. Uh, and, uh, you know, gained some, some insight from them on what to expect on the test. Uh, but, you know, I did it sneakily. I, I thought I'd be able to knock it out on the first go around and, and start putting those letters behind my name. And, you know, everything's good. It didn't work out like that. Um, you no, know, my second go around, uh, I had a lot of things going on my second go around. Uh, it was a short turnaround from getting the felling, felling results for my first time uh, to the second time. And uh, I, I didn't really uh, speak to many engineers during that time. Um, and, you know, I, I talk about that uh, in, in depth in the book. I'm not going to get into it now. But my, my third time taking the test, uh, you know, I approached my studies with a razor sharp focus and I wanted every and any advantage that I could gain. So I talked to, uh, you know, all kinds of people, you know, I, I asked engineers, you know, uh, these specific questions about, you know, how they prepare, you know, what they did, you know, I asked, you know, when did, it, when did they take the exam? Uh, did they pass on their first, first time taking it? Uh, if not, how many times did it take them to pass? What did they do differently when they passed versus when they came up short? Uh, you know, questions like that. Um, and, you know, it, just because somebody something worked for someone else doesn't mean that it's gonna work for you. But, you know, you can learn from the experiences of others. And, you know, there is a, a saying that I think, I think about, uh, you know, I, I really like the saying, um, but it was a saying that a mother said to her son, 
goes like this. It says you can either be smart or wise. You know, a smart man makes mistakes, recognizes his mistakes, and learns from them. You know, a wise man learns from the mistakes of others. Be wise, son. <laughs> you know, and I really like that. And, uh, you know, that's what I was attempting to do. I was attempting to be wise. So, uh, you know, others have passed. You know, what do they do? With that? You know, what, what made them successful? Not to say that the same things that work for them are going to work for you, but, you know, there are likely some things there that, uh, that you can draw from uh, to help you achieve it. That's great. Yeah. I love that story. Be wise. That's great. I, uh, in fact, I think that applies to all facets of the PE exam process, even filling out the application. When I was filling out the application, I went around to everybody in my office that had, you know, received the permission from the state board to sit for the exam. And I said, can I look at your application? Can you give me any tips on what not to do? Um, I think that's very applicable again, career and life as well beyond the PE exam, of course, but that's great a great way, a great help for someone, especially someone who's struggled with the exam in the past. All right. Number seven, prepare your body for battle. How can one prepare their body for battle, this PE exam battle? <laughs> yeah, Anthony, you kind of hit it on it a little bit earlier. Uh, you know, mimicking the testing environment as close as possible. I mean, that, that's a great way to prepare. Try to study for uh, extended periods of time. You know, when you're studying, you know, try shoot for, shoot for two hours. You know, I say two hours is a good benchmark. It's uh, halfway between, you know, morning and after session. Uh, if you have that time available, and when you're doing that, you know, you're not, you know, you're not lounging, you're not snacking. <laughs> you know, you're, you're doing, you're you're putting yourself in that testing environment. You have access to a clock you know, or, you know, a, a timer or something that helps you keep track of time. Uh, if you have to go to the bathroom, uh, you know, keep that in mind. Say you're on the clock, <laughs> you know, don't dilly dally in the bathroom. Do your business and get back to work. Um, you know, so doing those things uh, will help you train your body. Uh, it's, it's a long test, eight hours <laughs> of sitting and, and thinking analytically and being on edge, stress, you know. Uh, there's a lot that goes into that. So, you know, uh, training your body, you know, conditioning yourself, you know, think about, we use all kinds of muscles, muscles in our necks, you know, our wrists, back, you know, hips, every, everything you don't think about when you, when you are able to, uh, you know, to move freely, but you can't do that during that state. So you need to, you know, get yourself ready uh, to endure <laughs> that long test when that wall hits you, <laughs> you know, it's going to hit you. Um, if you've prepared your body, then uh, you'll be better served. Yeah, it's a great point. I think it's something that's overlooked by a lot of people is thinking about the physical and mental challenge of sitting for just an eight-hour exam, regardless of what exam it is. Um, you have to be able to sit there for a long period of time. You have to be able to focus, you know, whatever it takes from you getting up every, you know, when you can take a walk to the bathroom, you know, whatever you got to do, you got to do to make sure you can keep and stay focused for that long. And that's, again, something you can prepare on. And I like Jaquay's recommendation of, you know, trying to study for longer periods of time. I mean, I think sometimes because the nature of people being busy, you try to grab 15, 30 minutes here and there. The problem with that, though, is you know, there's a lot of cognitive, you know, brain power needed to get into these topics. So if you, by the time you get in for a 15, 30 minute session and you get out, it's so much, takes so much brain power to start up again and wears you out. And plus it doesn't really replicate the exam. So, you know, doing those long stretches is going to be helpful for you to really preparing, you know, your mind and your body to be able to handle it. All right. Number eight, Jaquay, have a test taking strategy and execute. Tell us about this one. Yep. So test taking strategy. Uh, there are many strategies. Uh, I know, you know, you all hear about them all the time. Uh, you know, I did this, I did that, uh, you know, and again, it's not a one size fits all parameter, you know. Um, so the key is to, uh, to try out different strategies, you know, in practice and see what works best for you. you know, what allows you to, to finish the, the, the tests or work your problems within that allotted time. Uh, and uh, and get get results from it, um, you know. So I mean, there are all kinds of uh, strategies. Uh, I, I guess I could, I could mention a few. Uh, 
you know, for instance, if you choose to work uh, your exam by topic, you know, say I'm going to work the topics that I'm strongest in first. Uh, oh, that's one way. Uh, you could choose to work it straight through, you know, from front to back, regardless of what, what the case is. Um, you could work it by uh, the structure of the project, of the, of the uh, problem. You know, when I say structure, you know, we're talking, you know, uh, you know, graph, graphical problems or uh, conceptual or, you know, things where you need to look things tables, you could work things like that. So, you know, it's, it's completely dependent on you. But the, the main point is, whatever it is, you know, use a strategy and stick to it. So the execute is on test day. You know, you've, you've practiced or you should have practiced, you know, a, a strategy or an approach to how you, you're going to go into the exam room. Uh, you shouldn't be going into the exam room trying to figure out, or, you know, what am I going to do next or, or thinking about the next steps, you know, it should already be engraved. You should, you should have created a habit by then. <laughs> you know, by the time you get to test day, you know, you're on autopilot. You know, you're, you're focused on the problems and not on, on logistics. Right. That's great. Yeah. You know, I'll let people check out your book for some, some more details around the strategies, but I can tell you my own experience was answering kind of the easier questions for me first time through it just worked well for me because I was able to try to get to those questions that took me less than six minutes, like you mentioned before. And then I kind of banked up some time for later on. But like you said, some people are different. They like certain types of questions. Some people just say, I want to go front to back. You know, I just did easier for me mentally to go through it that way. Um, so it really is kind of up to you on how you handle exams, how you want to approach it best. And again, you're going to use your study time to figure that out, right. To experiment a little bit and to see what works best for you. And if you take some really dedicated uh, exams, studying practice exams, you can kind of grade yourself on different strategies and see kind of which one kind of worked best for you. All right, Jaque, what final advice or tips would you like to give our listeners out there considering taking the PE exam? Yep. Uh, you taking the PE exam, just know there aren't any shortcuts. You know, you got to put the work in, uh, you know, it's, it's nowhere around it. Uh, and, I'd say, again, you know, any, any PEs that you know, if you know a PE, uh, they were able to pass the PE exam, you know, they were able to do it then so can you. Uh, you know, the key is, you know, figuring out how are you gonna achieve that? But you see that it is achievable because you know folks that have already been life. Yeah, no, that's great. I think, listen, I think that anytime you have a goal, if you know, a lot of other people have achieved it. It to me, it's much easier to grab onto because you know it's achievable. There's thousands of licensed professional engineers out there, and you know they maybe struggled, but they got it done. And so the same can happen for you if you're struggling. And hopefully, you'll pick up Jaquay's book, and he can kind of help you through his book with some of the strategies that he's talked about here today. So Jaquay Jones author of Pass the PE Exam in Three Months, Strategies and Mindset for the Non-Test Taker, which you can find on Amazon. Jaquay, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. I hope you found my conversation with Jaquay helpful. In upcoming videos, I will solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Pass the PE exam videos will publish weekly, so please be sure to click the subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, I encourage you to ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to you. Maybe let me know if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover or a specific question that you need answered. Pass the PE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.